All right, guys, welcome back to HIT. And today we've got a brand new series where we're gonna dive into the bag of a tour professional today, Tommy Fleetwood. Tommy, thanks, pal. What's it called? This is just diving into golf bags. Did you call it HIT? Yep, yeah, got a new channel. Ah, hit. So, nice. all about equipment. Okay. Honest, independent, trustworthy. Okay. Um, which you are. Yes. In abundance. <laughs> uh, we're here at the Tommy Fleetwood Academy here at Jumeirah Golf Estate, DP World Golf Performance Centre. Um, I, I'm interested to know where would you like to start with this kind of in-depth what's in the bag? And I, uh, I want to take it with kind of a little bit of a casual theme. Where would you like to start? Wherever you like, really. Do you think wedges then first? Oh, let's go, build let's, up to the let's go wedges, okay. Let's go wedges. Because in this bag, there's a driver that's only just been released, which you're going to want to wait to watch to find out what that is. Um, I've got uh, two MG460 degrees in the bag. Okay. Um, so th this would be uh, the one that I'm likely to use. I got back from TaylorMade filming, and um, while I was there, Tiger was obviously there hitting balls, and I saw a TW wedge in his bag. Uh, I didn't steal it, but I just commandeered it. Um, is that right? You've nicked this out of Tiger's bag? Well, well I, I did it, but asked for permission off the uh, TaylorMade guys, and they made it to my spec. So that's actually Tiger's wedge that was in his bag. So that's I pretty cool. It in there. Um, We'll hit that one. Is everyone just everyone's just a secret? Well, not even secret. Die-hard Tiger fan, aren't they? Let's be honest. Can't help it. So, with the 60s, is this a club that you use quite a lot around the green? Are you quite a lofty player with wedges? Um, yeah, yes and no. Um, like, I always think... So, for, for me, uh, personally, and what I would teach if I was teaching chipping, if I was ever in doubt, I would go to my, like, more loft. Yeah. Um, just because I feel like there's no trouble in the air, like so, um, like I would just go to if I was ever in, in like split, you know, split between am I going to hit a 60 and a 52, I would go to the 60. Okay. If I was going to choose between a wedge and a 99, I would go wedge. I would just always go to the more lofted one. That's interesting. So then the ball was never going away from me too much, kind of thing. It's interesting because we really you being such a, a Lynx golfer, kind of growing up. That yeah. You're not, you're not more for keeping it lower. Well, I'm. Um, um, I would say I'm good at putting. Um, I'm good at putting off the green, yeah. um, and I, I, I do like chipping runs. And if there's ever a chance where I can go low, I will. But still, I just get used to playing on tour, and then I always go like I have 60 as a go-to. Probably you need it at tour greens, the speed of I tour greens. I think so. Greens. Yeah, like it's actually. Um, I always feel like when I play. So if I ever play like in winter and you get the green slow, very often you're trying to add pace to the ball. You know, try yeah. and get the ball up to the hole and. Um, all year on tour, you're trying to actually take pace off the ball most of the time. Trying to get it to spin. Yeah. Well, I'd like to see a shot, almost like a little, a little delicate one, like a, like a 30 odd yarder. Okay. With this. Um, do, do you change grind or bounce a lot with your wedges? I try the not year? to. I uh, try to have a wedge that's pretty universal, so that it's something that's so constant for me. I do, I do get why um, guys will change. You get to courses um, when we get to Florida, so so grainy. Yeah. Um, you know, grainy Bermuda, I can see why people put more bounce in and stuff, but I just like having a set wedge and then I'll work around that. I suppose that's that's the benefit of the TW grind because it's got a lot of options on the sole. Well, you can actually, you can open it up. It's Tiger in it. You can, but I think that's, when you actually look at the bottom of the 60 on that TW grind, that's where you've got all these little kind of yeah. more grinded off Nailed areas. And then he's got this little bit that I noticed. So I've never had that on, I don't think I have that on my wedges. It's got this little leading, I'm leading edge a little bit, so. I'm guessing that's so you can kind of play almost a little bit more of a, of a back-footed Well, I, I just I just kind of thought, if Tiger Woods has got it, it seems like a good idea, so. <laughs> kind of... Are you into equipment? Are you, are you quite an equipment geek? Um, I'm not a geek, um, but I do like equipment, yeah. Um, like, I, I like sort of looking at what's new, what's out there, um, love putters. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I do, I do sort of, and I always keep up to date, like on, um, on like Instagram, I follow all the, you know, equipment, like yeah, stands and stuff. Twenty six. Twenty six. Pretty good. Oh, let's move up, um, and then you go from. Is it straight from sixty I'd, to fifty two? Uh, yeah. So I only have um, sixty, fifty two, and a pitching wedge because um, I'll obviously get to it later. But I have driver. Uh, mini driver, which is kind of a three wood, uh, five wood, three iron. So oh, I have right, more okay. options at the top of the bag than the than the bottom end. Is that because you feel like you can almost manipulate shots around the green? Um, so I used to have four wedges. I wasn't a very good chipper when I uh, originally came out on tour, um, and um, 
started working with Jamie Spence years ago and one of the first things he did was put four wedges so I went 60, 56, 52 pitching wedge which is either 47 or 48 yeah. um, drive a three wood, five wood, four iron and I always felt like I could manufacture the five wood but then I think there was a point in like 2017 or 2018 I think the course has got a fraction longer and then all of a sudden I started to have more shots around that between 230 and 250 into either like a long par four or par fives yeah. and then I was in no man's land a lot where I had to it, you know take a lot off a of five wood or so I ended up having more of those shots so then I took a wedge out and put yeah. a, um, an extra club in it was just one of them things where I think the golf course has progressed a little bit but I suppose it, I mean, again it's not a rule that's likely to change it's likely to go the other way but if there was 15 club options I'm guessing then that's where you'd maybe fill that gap between yeah. 52 and 60 yeah 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 I mean whoever made the 14 club rule I've no idea why it 14 is, a, mad, is a number like um, if anybody knows that leave a comment that, down that below. would be actually a good one. I would love to know like when, yeah, did, four, when did 14 because 18 would make sense would it be an 18 holes 18, of golf potentially 10 just a round number yeah. 10 I don't know well do you know do you know even how 18 holes came about no so a bottle of whiskey would take 18 shots to drink is that true so you'd have a shot a shot hole each hole to get through the bottle of whiskey as a, as a group four of you whatever so that's how that's how they end up because it was 22 originally <laughs> But they didn't have enough whiskey to last 22 holes. They I'd cut it down to 18. I'd have been no good at golf back then. <laughs> uh, what shot do you like hitting with this club? Um, 52. Uh, like all my wedges, I would have a full swing, smooth swing, something I would call hands to shoulders, where I feel like my hands get to my shoulders and then something around the middle, hands to middle, and then like... Um, maybe on links where it gets windy or you get a really soft course where it's spinning. Some, you know, I need something where it'd just be a bit more feel under like 100 yards with a 52 where, you know, I wouldn't be able to hit a lob wedge because of the spin. Should we go for 100 yards? No, I thought you might. Is that the one you like or not? Well, a middle is like 105, so it's a little bit off that. So, so we'll a see. middle being mid, like almost chest high? Like, yeah, somewhere here. Yeah. So there's my hips, there's my shoulders, so somewhere in the middle. Hands to middle for me, that's like. <laughs> I like it. Ninety-five. That's I also bad, actually that was quite good. I also quite like the idea how you just told me where your hips are and your shoulders are. Just in case I didn't. Uh, know. We're on an anatomy lesson as well. <laughs> or, uh... <laughs> okay, that's wedges done. And then moving into irons, we're going to do irons as kind of a bit of a hole. Okay. So I would. So you, uh, the actual setup is three iron down to pitching wedge. Yeah. Um, but let's let's go off with the, a mid iron. Let's go yeah. with the seven iron. Seven or an eight is always a nice. Uh... Do you have do you have a favourite out of those two? Like a, a favourite iron um, kitten. No, so like whenever I set, um, so whenever I set the plane perfecto up in the box, which everybody sees, I always start with an eight or a seven on it. Just yeah. they're the two that are a go-to. Like yeah. I feel like anytime somebody picks up an iron, somewhere in the middle just feels nice, doesn't it? So yeah. an eight or a seven's always mine. It's where most golfers learn how to play. I think so. Golf. Yeah. It is. Like, um, tell us, tell us about your irons. What have you got? Um, TWs. Uh, I've used them. So I was a Nike player. Um, when they stopped making equipment was just about when, back in 2016, when I started to get my game back, started to play a bit better. Decided I wasn't gonna change anything for a while because I knew I was on the right track. So I used, um, uh, what were the blue? You had the vapor driver. Were they you? vapor? Yeah. yeah, the blues, blue five wood. Unbelievable golf club. Um, but I had the, the VR irons as well, the VR protos, I think they were called. And I carried on using them until, um, 2018 I think or 2019 it might have been and uh, Taylor made made a set for Tiger Woods TW irons and they were pretty close to they were as close as you're ever going to get to the VRs yeah. and um, they made Adrian who I'm really close to Adrian's a great fitter isn't he as well oh he's amazing yeah he's gaining such a great reputation on tour as well like yeah. such a hard worker such a good fitter I'm very close to him and um, but anyway he get he made me up a set and and gave them to me and um, he actually told he actually told me this uh uh, there is a story where I used them before Tiger Woods did um, because they'd just been made and he made them up for me and brought them out to Abu Dhabi thinking just have a look at them or whatever and I played a practice round and I liked them so I just played with them and he didn't know I'd played the tournament oh with them God. I wasn't supposed to and um, anyway it's like I can't believe he's used the like, irons Tiger Woods Tiger Woods was playing his first event was going to be Genesis at Riviera so he hasn't even played with them yet oh, and that's I, hilarious. I was the first ones but Tiger actually 
tells me that I was I used them before him or had them before him. But that was my they were just the one initial away. My claim to fame. They should have been TFs. Uh, they did make a set of TFs, believe it or not. But uh, for some that. unknown reason, they just didn't take off like the TWs did. I don't know. I don't know why. No. Why, why, why is that? Um, what spec? Do you know your spec? Um, no, but I think they're pretty standard. I think they're very sort of standard loft and lie and length and. Well, uh, well. If they're, a, if they're a Tiger Woods loft, they're very, very weak. Yeah, but they're not. They're not Tiger Woods loft. I don't loft. think so. So Ti I'm sure Tiger's seven iron. I think he, does, he doesn't iron. spin the ball, does he? So he's no, like... Tiger's seven iron is 36 degrees of loft. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I... Where uh, standard is more like 34. Is it really? For, yeah, for, I, 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 won't be I won't now. be Tiger loft. But the, the one thing I do have, actually, if you set my grip up straight, what what um, does the head look like? A little like bit to? open. Yeah, so I have all my grips open. Did you set the club behind the ball a little bit open? I must do. But that's the one thing, and I never knew um, until... Um, I can't remember who it was. Somebody picked up my clubs and they went, all these grips are on wrong, and I was like, they're perfect. And um, that's when I knew that I set them up. I have the grips set up. Um, I think it's um, on a clock face, the grips would be 12.30, is that? Yeah. Or 11.30. They'd be 11.30. So that's, that, yeah, so that's the one like, thing about my clubs. So Project X 6.5 yeah. shafts. Mm -hmm. uh, what, are the, what are these grips? Because I know well, I've seen Iomics. them before. Yeah, um, yeah that um, used these for uh, since 2011 right. or 2012, only on my irons. So I have, um, now you've noticed, I have uh, the BCTs um, on my wedges and uh, woods and iomics on my irons so just again with the I, the shaft of the wedges dynamic gold s400 uh tour issue it's interesting because a lot of wedges have like wedge specific shafts flexes uh, now yeah these are these are softer than my project x 6.5 yeah. just um a little bit of giving my wedge a little bit more feedback through the shaft um a little bit lighter it's just uh yeah just how i you know feel a wedge really and the and the actual 52 degrees like a, a mill grind high toe as well mm -hmm. i don't feel like it was ever a production wedge is that a special oh, wedge i don't know maybe. i don't recall ever seeing that one actually come out into production maybe uh well how far do you carry your seven iron normally i know we've just been chatting and might be a little bit less than uh nine, i but. reckon this is going to carry about 185. okay i like it show us what you got tommy 185. Let's have a look Oh, it's in meters. Oh, is it? It's in meters. <laughs> oh, so hang on a minute though. The 95 it's 169 before. meters. So that that is this far in yards. Uh, so your 95 before would have actually been 104. 103. Come on. Oh, I've done it. You can have a look if you like. <laughs> He's just typed in 185. <laughs> exactly 185 yards, 6,500 backspin. Very good. So iron wise, I mean, they've been in the bag for a little while. No, yeah. No ambitions to change in that category. No, I, um, you know, I know the shape and everything um, is right for me and um, like we, we all have characteristics in how we, you know, the windows in which we hit, the spin which we play and everything. And I know that these irons always work well for me and I'll always work towards them. So yeah, uh, yeah these are these are good. They're very, very nice. Right, and you've kept, are these new set? Because they're absolutely these are, pristine. They, they are a brand new set. I was going to yeah. say they are literally, they've hardly got a dent I, hit, I hit more balls than that. Yeah, they are a new set. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do you even practice, Tommy? <laughs> um, and then where do we go from there? So that's three irons, um, longest iron. Five would, would be next. Uh, by, by the way, first off, talking about this head cover. It's a bit, uh, a bit old and uh, weathered, but it's that's the 2018 one. Um, Is that a newer one, this one? That's 2023. Nice. So the, and the put a head cover as the 2023 as well. That's very nice. It's like the um, Ryder Cup's thrown up all over my bag. Do you still have the, uh, just have the open umbrella somewhere? Oh, that's still somewhere, yeah. I, I do use a, a tailor-made umbrella these days, but the open one is still proud of place in the house somewhere. Finn, I loved that umbrella. Was that the fact you just didn't have an umbrella and you had to buy it from the shop? Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> and it was light, light and easy. Very durable, by the way. There we go. The open make good umbrellas. <laughs> there we go. Okay, five wood, what have we got? Uh, stealth two, I'm still uh, still in the stealth two five wood. Um, 
Kurikaji, did I say that right? Yeah. Kurikaji. Kurikaji, I think it is. ATX. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, like five woods, um, 18 degree, pretty. I think it's pretty standard. This is actually the glued head. It's I was going to say that, this is fixed, isn't uh, it? Yeah, not one that you can adjust. And um, it's like five woods, such a finicky club, isn't it? When you yeah. get one that you like and you can and you feel like you can do what you want with it. It's not like a club that you're going for distance or anything. So um, it this looks one, quite, it looks quite short. Um, I mean, potentially my driver. So my driver used to be a full inch shorter, but now it's um, now it's a bit longer, like half an inch or a quarter of an inch, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Five would might be. Well, there's a trend at the moment with shorter fairway Short woods because it just you, get, you don't Spin. actually lose that much distance, but you gain more accuracy. Well, I've always thought that. I mean, I always get told how much I grip down on it, and then like, but I've never really lost distance. And then even on a shorter club, I um, I grip down anyway. Yeah. Like. So how far would this normally carry? Um, between 250 and 260. Whether I get 250 out of it right now is another story, but we'll try. That's something else you've got in common with Tiger. He likes a fixed-headed fairway wood as well, doesn't he? Does he? He, doesn't, he likes it glued. I can imagine, like, I can imagine some people that grew up, do you know when you had the old clubs that were obviously always fixed and yeah. it was so difficult to fit them probably? Once you got, like, one fixed, I can imagine you sort of really liking a fixed head. OK, let's see it. 250 we're going for. Well, uh, no, 240, 245. <laughs> oh. So ah, Chasey went down there. 248. 248 was good. I'm guessing that was a little bit lower than normal. A little bit, yeah. I can, I'll hit another one for you, I'm not. What do you like doing with this club? So I, I, um, personally, well, I always feel like a five would for me personally, I feel like it would almost pop up a bit too much. It's, no, it's a pretty neutral flight for me, and like, um, so I feel like I can hit like I feel like I can do a lot with it. I can hit a hard draw, I can, I can hold it up a bit. Um, obviously, with a five wood, I'm never going to try and hit a really low one, but uh, I, I feel like I can get it down a little bit. Um, and even when you, I think a five wood's not really known. People wouldn't sort of necessarily put it together with really windy conditions, but at the same time get downwind and you want to take some pace off the yeah. ball like five wood's going to go up and it's going to carry a long way but not be getting miles away from you so are, um, are you a shaper of the golf ball do you like move, uh, it, move it are you a bit more of a because you'd be a bit more faded were you no i draw it oh we um, drew it i'm not i'm not a great fader of the ball but i will do it when i need to um in general i like i like hitting the one shot the most of the time if i'm if i'm playing and and just messing around i enjoy yeah. you know hitting every single different shape possible but if I'm playing in tournaments, I'm, I'm a very good, consistent drawer of the ball, so I would do that 95% yeah. of the time unless I need to. So, okay, let's go. Let's go a high-flighted. Oh, high, we want little. Well, yeah, I'd like what to see shape? A little, well, if you say you can't hit a fade, I'd like to see a little high fade. You want? I'd, imagine, say, I'd imagine, say I can't hit one. <laughs> imagine a little tight pin into a par five. A you've got to you you cut one in there. Oh, that's so good. That that's really, really good. nice. 247 carry. Dialed. That was nice, that That was dialed. Good. Do you think you'll switch maybe to the newer version? Uh, potentially, yeah. They are they are very, very good clubs. Um, and the th I mean, the thing with my setup is that I, I only have one fairway wood um, because I have the mini driver. So uh, like the five wood is the only, other, you know, the other the fairway wood that I would have in effectively. We'll come on to this club in a minute. <laughs> We'll save that for a minute because that's an interesting club in the bag at the moment. The burner, the mini burner. Yeah, mini driver. You loving this? Ah, beautiful club. The, was this the club you hit on 16 at the Ryder Cup? No, it was driver. Oh, was it the big stick? Yeah, it was the big stick. Um, so mini driver. Uh, again, like I, I'm not a shaft expert, so please forgive me. But Aventus uh, six X, future core Aventus, I should yeah. say. Um, 13 and a half degree set just a little bit lower by the looks of it yeah just yeah. a touch lower um for me so i saw um fred couples had this club in the bag at the masters and um so my three wood for me so i would never hit a three wood um as a fairway finder like i would tee the driver down and hit it like a, a necky cut or something yeah three wood for me was like a really fast hot club that if i wanted to get up on a par five or something from like 290 i felt like i might have a chance of doing it other than that i never really used it so um i saw um this club at the masters and then i got one the following week at hilton head which is a really tight little course 
start lines are really important and it was unbelievable around that golf course and, and, and did you get it for off the tee yeah yeah it was it was just like i said my three wood was yeah it was fine um but i, I had it for a certain purpose and um i just tried this and felt like i could do more with it and now all of a sudden um like i, I actually so i don't so I don't hit many different shots with this. I haven't really tried to either when I'm at tournaments, but it, it draws every time for me. So I feel like stand up there, I'll tee it down a little bit and I feel like I can try and just push my start line up that right side and it's always coming back. And it's been such a good golf club for me, like off the tee, if I'm not feeling, not feeling comfortable with driver, I feel like I can hit the mini driver and I actually think it's helped my swing while playing in tournaments as well. It's just been a really good club so far for me. Love it. Um, how far does this carry? I'm gonna say, right now uh two seven five and is that is that how high you tee it up yeah i don't tee it up very high no, no that, i think that's quite high really for this club yeah I you know what it is i struggle with mini drivers because you think it should be a driver no i almost feel like it should be a three wood ah okay so i do, do you remember taylor made did um it was called like the t300 or something this yeah. was like three years yeah, ago yeah, or two years yeah. ago yeah. And I thought it should be a driver and I couldn't get my head around it. It looked way too lofted and I couldn't get like T right and I was just like, I can't see it. Um, but I've, I've liked this one. Yeah, I think for me, naturally, I want to tee it lower and hit it like a three wood. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Swing wise, do you try and hit this just like driver? No, slightly different. Um, like I said, I feel like I have a push through impact with this one. So it starts up the right. My driver doesn't turn over as much as yeah. this. Um, but I feel like it does help my driver swing um, just because I think my natural tendency will be to start getting behind and then my swing path would be going left yeah. with my driver. So this club, if I ever take this out, I feel like I have to stay on it and hit it up the right. So then when I bring driver, I'm sort of in the middle and it helps my, my swing. So 275 carry? That's what we're going for. Do you for, hit yeah. it off the deck much? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it has to be a nice lie. Yeah. Because <laughs> it is effective, like you're saying, it's like a driver. Yeah, yeah. Certainly if it's 13 degrees, but you've got it cranked lower, it's probably 12, nearly to 12 degrees. Uh, a bit oh. bottomy, Rick. 265 carry. Just a little bit bottomed. It was, but it was straight, wasn't it? It, it was, was very, good. very straight. If any, like I say, it just had that little tiny draw. Yeah. Let's have another go. <laughs> nice, I like that flight. That was a really that was that was the one, yeah. Two seven four carry. I love that. Have you seen the party trick? The head cover. You've not seen the I'm party trick. Fit. This is interesting. No why? Is that real? No, no. I've just made. I'm I'm a magician. I'm a part-time magician. <laughs> do people do that? Do you think it looks better? Uh, well. Do you remember back in the day? I had no idea. I know. I thought you would. I no. must admit. I said that thinking you're going to say to me, no. I had I, no idea. I wondered what you were doing. Yeah, so do you remember back in the day? Certainly Leave this. Leave it like that. It's, it's fine. You're not going to keep it like that. I might do. If you keep it like that, that would make my life. Um, <laughs> yeah, do you remember back in the day? Certainly this style of head cover. Yeah. A few brands were a bit creative inside. Ah, uh, okay. So Will that be okay in the wet or do I need it the other way? I, it, listen, uh, see, I don't think Finna would like we're it. We're in Dubai. So um, straight. Now, before we come on to the driver, yeah. what the hell is this in your bag? Um, the railer. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you'd get away with that no, name so anymore. I'll, t I'll, t I'll tell you what, <laughs> me and Tim were in the academy the other day and we have um, three or four big sets of clubs for getting to golf. So, get, so people that will come to the academy and never played before. So we just have irons yeah. for them to try right. out. People, what people have donated, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So we were going through the bag, and we were like, "Well, I can't believe that's in there." We took that out, like some really good, like retro clubs and everything. I found this tailor-made railer in there, and then um, I was like, "Oh my god, this is this looks awesome!" So um, I took it and uh, I hit a few shots with it just because. But actually, if you look at, I did a picture on Instagram. Have you seen the size of it compared yeah, to an actual ridiculous. mini driver? It's ridiculous. Um, 
So anyway, I uh, I like playing with old golf clubs. Like I, I kind of yeah. like the game, but and um, so I, I threw it in the bag and I played. Uh, I hit some shots with it and I played a few holes the other day. There's something really satisfying about a steel shaft in a, in a yeah, fairway. Yeah, I, I know, I know. It's quite rippy. It doesn't gonna... happen anymore, does it? No, I mean, that's a regular. I've noticed that before. It's an old school regular 300 shaft. So How far do you reckon be... this is going to go? What degree is it? 15. It says 14 on it. Uh, I reckon 245. Really? Do you think longer? Oh, uh, maybe. It's a little bit necked, a little push. 243, how good are you? It's not bad, was it? Good caddying. Uh, it sounded good. Oh, that was good though. Didn't it? <laughs> it sounded really good. Well, you know what's quite unique about that as well, and, and I'm sure you, you're an advocate of this. I've got these clubs that are tiny, tiny headed, like yeah, training yeah. drills. Yeah. And when you hit a few shots with that and you go back to your own club, it oh, just yeah. feels, it feels totally great, doesn't it? Doesn't and it? That, I think with the shaft being like regular as well, you've got to control your rhythm with that a little bit more as well. Before we come on to driver, let's have a quick look at your putter. Okay. Well, we've come over to the putting green. First off, tell me one day, I want my initials on a uh, like that. <laughs> that looks really cool. Uh, nice flags, actually. Yeah, very good. Do you like the logo? I like the logo a lot. Good. Is that, is that, I'm guessing that's a golf ball in the middle. Uh, good question. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll go for that. It's golf I think ball it's really it. smart. Yeah, I think it's really good. Right, putter. We're going to do putter and golf ball, actually. Okay. Um, so let's do golf ball first. Golf ball first. People might have seen it already, you're hitting. You've got a tailor-made. Uh, TP5X picks um, number 19. Okay, what's number 19 for? Um, supposedly, I said I have no superstitions, it's supposedly my lucky number. Um, supposedly? Someone, supposedly. That's almost like someone's told you that you're like, Well, like. my um, my date of birth is in, in UK terms, 19191, so it's the same backwards. Oh, that's quite 19, cool. 19191. Um, 19 at roulette. Cost me a lot of money. <laughs> uh, not really. Um, and I just, I've always kind of uh, liked the number 19, so... Um, yeah, we get to, you know get to choose a number, so that was mine. And 19 was a good year. I, I thought 2019 might be the year on the open, but Shane ruined that. Um, <laughs> Shane ruined. Shane it. ruined it. Shane ruined the dream. Um, you'll get lots more chances. <laughs> Putter then. What we what we rocking? Uh, oh, by the way, again. sorry. Why do you, quick one? Why do you like the picks? Um, so I, um, I I line the ball up, but I think people underestimate lining the ball up isn't a guaranteed like skill like um it's hard to do it's actually not that easy to do and um so this one so this ball in particular the picks i remember trying it and it was uh ricky had designed it i remember so it's designed to have a big so the orange lines at the end of the triangles and the white just make one big wide strip so again it's good feedback for the roll but also it just puts less pressure on getting the line absolutely perfect so i do use a line uh, sometimes but also i can just like I can line up the logo, I can just line up the fat white piece, I can line up that. So it just it just gives me a few options. And also, the one other thing that I do is there's a there's a fully black triangle on the top. So I will tee it up there, or I'll place it down for long putts, and that's my focus point then to keep my eye on the on the ball for long uh, putts. Uh, just it's just something to focus on. So at the it's end of, at the end of everything, when you've you know talked through the shot and everything, you've had your practice swings. I just put that down, and that's my. Uh, do you last. do that on like tee shots or anything? Yeah, as well? it's the last thing I look at. Yeah, on a tee shot. So. And what about um, like chipping? Because a lot of talk about it, players like um, that kind of feedback of how the ball's spinning. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, again, yeah, it is there for that. I don't worry about that too much. But again, I remember when the balls did come out and they were like the footballs, weren't they? Yeah. And stuff. Um, the feedback is there, and, it, and it's it's very very good feedback. Um, and the other thing, the final thing, is that you don't really have to identify your ball. No, you know it's yours. You've got to pick. So you, you know it's yours. But what's it like when like, you're in a Ryder Cup and a player, your playing partner doesn't use picks? Uh, we use a white ball. Is it, easy, <laughs> that is it pretty... easier for you to switch to a white yeah, ball? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't matter too much to me. Um, like this is the ball I like playing with, but equally I played with a white golf ball for the first 30 yeah. years of my life. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so under the Ryder Cup uh, head cover? A Ryder, another Ryder Cup head cover. Um, Very nice. So uh, this putter for me, white hot. Um, I've never known. I, I guess it is a number three, but it's um, Pro Three. So there's. Uh, I this is my second version of of this putter. I got one in 2016 on the putting green at the British Masters. Yeah. Um, 
In what year then was, did you say? 2016. Okay. Um, and I used that until, is again, that, like... Is that the one at Woburn? It was at... Um, no, it wasn't Woburn. It was the one after. Was it the Grove or something? The or? Grove. It was. It was um, the Grove, yeah. And uh, it had gone through again. Nike had just left, and I think I used a different putter for like eight weeks straight and eventually settled on this one. Uh, but my original one just had a back line on it, and then I, I hand put a dot on it that was in the heel. I got it wrong. Oops. Um, but that was fine. I used that for a long time, and then eventually, um, like you go off and on putters, of course, like you always do. And then I came back to this one, which just has a top line on it, but same shape for a long time this grip's been on it a while um one thing i always think is when um do you know when you see somebody that's got like a really weathered battered mm. putter and a grip i feel like they're a good putter yeah so I like agree. whether i'm a good putter or not i like to have a battered putter because it makes me feel like i am i was almost going to ask you what did you actually get that brand new this was brand new and i didn't do anything to it this is just through <laughs> use this is down. just through use and you like you can actually see where it sanded i obviously never have the heel on the ground um Surprised it actually that much black came off it. Yeah, I know. Okay. And would you would you consider how would you consider your putting game? Um I'm I'm a I'm a good putter without um I, I need to hold more, I hold out well and then I don't hold my fair share between like five and fifteen feet where you can make massive gains. So that's something that um at this point in time that we're working hard on to improve because I feel like that's somewhere where I can make a lot of gains. Um always feel like I'm a good lag putter. Um you still work with Phil Kenyon? Still work with Phil, yeah. I've worked with him for a long time. Actually, my first ever putting lesson I had was when I think I was 12, and I went to see Harold Swash, who was Phil's mentor. Oh, yeah. Um, and Phil was there, actually, a young Phil Kenyon. No way. Uh, well, I was a 12-year-old boy in South, but having a putting lesson, and then, um, yeah, I've worked with Phil, like, on and off throughout my career. So. Well, I feel like Yes had a very similar style to that Yeah, they did. I used a lot of Yes putters. I, used I've got, I feel like I remember you I used yes. to love a Yes putter, yeah. Because <laughs> they've all. come, they've almost come back a little bit now, have you seen uh, that? Yeah, so I'd say... Um, Adams have taken them on. Yeah, which is tailor-made. Yeah. Uh, so tailor-made are, are looking at uh, different, you know, avenues with the Sea Groove putter. Because I actually think the technology was almost ahead of its time, it if was. you like. Like grooves have come out since then and stuff. So uh, you never know; it might make a return. And I think it would be a good time to do it because I think, like, Yes and Sea Groove are still relevant to a lot of us. Like yeah. you remember them, yeah, and I remember 100%. them. And I think, you know, in a few years' time, not many people will remember. No. But if you did it now, like, it would still be a big thing where people remember and. Well, on this channel, one of the videos, uh, once you subscribe, Tommy, and check it out, one of the videos was we actually had one of the new um, Adams putters, and we tested ah, it against okay. an old, yes. Yeah. And they're identical. Yeah, yeah. As in performance-wise, a little tiny differences, yeah. but looks-wise, I mean, yeah. it's exactly, exactly Yeah, the they same. were great putters. They were really good putters. I've still got a lot in my house. Drop one down, and yeah. let's go to that flag just behind you towards the actual hitting base. What, what's your process of putting, Tommy? You to, do you aim point still? I do, yeah. I, um, I, reading greens is something that I'm always working on. Um, I suppose I don't have a particularly very natural eye, if you like, so I'm always trying to find ways to like rein that in. If you can't read a green, it's very difficult to, you know, pick a spot on all putts in a way. But um, yeah, I like to aim point, and Finno is a very good aim pointer with his feet, so that's helpful. So he's he's trained as you've trained. Yeah, yeah. And Finno's got, he's got really flat feet, so he's, he's like made for aim point in a way. He's like a built-in level. I feel like the way you walk, though, you've got quite a flat foot. Oh, thanks, Rick. Is that, no, I'm not uh, saying that the bad no. way. I'm sure you're a fantastic dancer, but I feel like you, you have like a very wide, like a flat, I have, I have flat a, foot walk. I do have a very wide foot, yeah, I'm not sure how flat, but anyway, a um, <laughs> little, bit, little bit of right to left. So then you line up the, you've lined up the actual TaylorMade logo there. Uh, I am doing, yeah. Flat put, fraction of right to left. Hopefully I get like a really good roll of the picks here. Set it out a bit far right, didn't I? Rolled quite well though. Nice pace. Just get a close up of this roll. Have you got one more ball there, Tommy? Let's just get a close up of the actual roll itself. If you get down low, you'll be able to really see it. How's that lined up, Rick? That looks like it's just in between that ball and the flag. Beautiful. Ah, uh -huh. no, oh, no, it snapped. <laughs> it snapped. But as you see there, you and we'll slow that clip down. Like the the logo, the actual pick logo is just kind of. It looks like a, a almost like a yeah, bowling yeah. alley. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Excellent. Um, right, we've kept people waiting for long enough. Let's go and show them the driver.
Okay. <laughs> okay then, big stick. Big stick. So brand new Ryder Cup 2023 head cover. Yeah. Love it, very nice. And under here, you got one of the new toys. Yeah. Talk us through it. Uh, QI10 LS, there's three different versions, but QI10 is the quest for 10,000 inertia, yeah. uh, is what we learned at the filming days. Yeah, that's right. No. Um, it, you can explain that. Well, it, I mean, you'd have probably seen the review already. I've done the full reviews of these now. Um, this idea, and I think you might be wrong. I always felt like stealth, original stealth, yeah. was fast, mm -hmm. really, really fast. But for the average golfer that wasn't a tour professional, that wasn't Tommy Fleetwood, I felt like it was one of the most unforgiving drivers ever made. Really? For, for normal people, wow. Tommy, not you, wow. for normal people. I think Stealth 2 was much, much better in the forgiveness category. Fargiveness. But Fargiveness, of course, but still kept the speed. Yeah, Fargiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they've, you, obviously you're a tailor made player, but I think their big thing was trying to make a driver that still catered for more golfers. Yeah. Yeah, which is yeah. now QI10. Uh, this, yeah, this this is amazing. I mean, we watched some really good videos of this, you know, hitting it off the toe. Yeah. And to be fair with what you said, um, they had a video of the Stealth 2, which I think was a, a great driver. Um, made a massive difference to my year last year was the driver. I, th I felt like I drove it way, way more consistent. I was hitting the ball further up the face, um, kept my distances a bit more, but there was a video of it getting hit off the toe. Yeah. And like the the face with the Stealth 2 had a massive, massive opening on it. And that's a forgiving driver. And then it showed this one again, I guess the quest for 10,000 inertia, there was a hit off the toe and it just sort of held it a little bit yeah. more, which was quite cool to see when they slow it down really, really and quick. A, and again, I think genuinely, 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 for, for the best players in the world that were using Stealth 2, you, Rory, Tiger, people who, who hit the middle, Stealth 2 and Stealth were unbelievable drivers. Yeah, yeah. But honestly, to the general punter, who couldn't hit the middle? It was unfor it wasn't as forgiving. Where I do think this has got a much yeah, this and this is the good. low spin model. So this is the less is that what LS model. stands for? Yeah, low, low spin. spin. I didn't know that. <laughs> I genuinely didn't know that. Right, come on, Tommy. How far is this drive? How does? Uh, what, what, um, just give us a little bit of spec first. Uh, nine degree. It looks pretty standard. To, uh, oh no, it's not standard. Uh, in between. Oh yeah. What is that? It's in so between. That, that's actually in a. Um, that is in a flatter setting. Okay, nine degree. And Sorry, a flat not flatter setting. Uh, what would that be? They've actually taken it off there. The detail. Uh, it's upright. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Slightly up, slightly um, upright. And uh, so that upright is to is to prevent the ball from going too far yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and then um, Future Core Aventus, six X shaft. Nice. Um, and then this is back going to back to your grip. Yeah. How come you've got it coloured in at the back? Uh, because we carry around two or three drivers when we're traveling, so this one I know is my actual driver that I use. Is that all you know? Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, how far does this carry? Uh, going by everything else at the moment, this is going to be uh, 290. Nice. Actually, quad might be forgiven, 295. Oh, this guy is dialed, <laughs> dialed. 294 yards. That is a deep dive into Tommy Fleetwood's bag. Is there any last, last, last things? Is there any like unique things that you always carry around with you? Um, Allow me. Is there anything in the bag that's no, kind not of, necessarily. Do you have like lucky ball um, markers or? No. So I uh, actually recently, and I, I don't have them in the bag at the because uh, they're in my tour bag, but. Um, Finno got me a little uh, satchel for ball markers because I literally get to the first hole every tournament and I'm like, Finno, have you got a coin? And I have a ball marker. Uh, and there was like a few, there's a couple of Ryder Cup ones in there and a um, couple of open ones that uh, Finno's daughter Zara bought uh, for me. So that, that would be in there. And, and the only other thing really is my um, training aids, uh, which, uh, you know, is the plane perfecter. And then I uh, sometimes I have a yoga block or I'll put like a mat, but I, um, I've pretty much um, broken every superstition possible uh, by proving that they don't help uh, and they're not real. But that's uh, that's pretty pretty a pretty simple golf bag to be honest with you. Had you had superstitions in the past? Uh, not necessarily, but I've always um, maybe after one round I've played well. I want like I don't know um, if there was something in the bag, whatever it might be. I don't even know what an example would be, but yeah, like if you've used same, coin, same or coins whatever. or like, you know, something like that. But yeah, like I say, um, a very, very simple set of clubs that I just. Uh, and then you rock 
smartwatch, the Tag yeah. Heuer smartwatch. Yeah. In in obviously in competition mode, you're not allowed to use yeah. any of those settings. You use the GPS and stuff when you're out in practice? Uh, yeah, generally when I'm practicing, I always like having it on. Uh, to be honest, it's quite good for me to keep track of my steps anyway, just to just to have a look at. Um, and again, just distances. I, I, I use a, a range finder if I'm playing, but also just to have an idea. Uh, the one thing that you don't know very often is how far you hit your tee shot. So uh, with the GPS on this, you can, you know, monitor that and um, yeah, use it for a few other different things. And, and actually at this point, um, I've worn it now for two years straight. If I don't have it on my wrist, it feels weird. Feels, so it's, feels it's, strange. it's there, it's just part of me. Well, Tommy, thanks for your time. <laughs> Thank you, mate. I think you smashed that. <laughs> Pretty good at this, aren't you? Guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. and We'll see you next time.